Wiki wiki Kenyans, this national anthem has sounded and it is of course a rallying call for everyone to wake up and go and build a nation and I'm glad that you've chosen KT News this morning to inform you and of course to entertain you and to educate you as well, we give you the whole story. My name is Dibala Nair, as always I trust that you've had a lovely restorative night and you're ready for the day, of course we shall be analysing how the week has been, looking at the political landscape looking also at uh, what is happening in the private sector looking at ongoing crisis with the, the doctors paralyzing healthcare everywhere in the country right now and uh, what is the immediate action that is coming from uh, government if any we shall be looking at that as well and what does it pretend moving forward we shall be looking also at uh, the recent development as far as the political parties are concerned with the upcoming grassroots elections as well where they're raising special umbrage with some of government officials uh, appointments so we shall be talking about that as well here on Wongozi today so i'll be joined this morning already there in the studio i'll show you their faces much much later we're joined by dr martin olo who is uh, the advocate of the High Court and also the head of the Department School of Law, the State University. I'm joined by Kip Kiprutorap Kirwa, who is a Governors and Policy Analyst. We shall be joined by Professor Jonah Kindiki, Governors and Policy Analyst. And also, we shall be joined much, much later uh, <clears throat> by another panelist, I'll tell you. Right, we shall look at all those raft of issues, but make sure that uh, you tuned in and uh, join our Facebook this is at or Twitter. They call it X nowadays at X KTN News. Also, you can follow me at Dibal Ainer. But let's see how the weather will be today.
All right, that's the weather for you. This is also what you're waking up to on the front page of uh, the dailies as well. Young leaders fight to eclipse old guard. A crop of new leaders is threatening to overthrow the older, or the old order. The young and the restless politicians are becoming louder and more voluble, organizing themselves in an attempt to cement their positions and upstage rivals. But how far can they go? That is the abiding question. You have the story on page 10 and 11 of the standard this morning. And it says here that restless generation, a crop of new leaders is threatening to overthrow the old order, as I've mentioned. But how can, can they go? How far can they go? On page 10 and 11 of the standard is what you want to read. We have Governor Natambea saying he's talking about bigger things after 2027, which shows he has some serious ambitions achievable only after handling Kingpin, Moses Britangula. That is what... One of the analysts is saying here, you can read the story inside the standard today. 75, sh 75 billion shillings tax stalling M Pesa split. That is another story that you want to follow on page 18 of the standard today. A plan to split Safaricom from its mobile money unit. M Pesa has stalled over 75 billion shillings tax that will arise out of the separation. That story is tucked away on page 18 of the standard today. Doctor Strike, private hospitals, next target. And uh, you can see standing in solidarity there, doctors led by the Secretary General of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union, KMPDU, Dr. Davji Atela, when they addressed the press at the University of Nairobi's Faculty of Health Sciences yesterday. The union warned that if the authorities do not meet their demands, they will escalate the strike to private hospitals. And that story continues on page six, seven, eight, and nine of the Standard Today. Looking at the teaser on top here, Clark Turuto, you are turning Kenyans into paupers. That is what the clerics are saying. And you can follow the story on page 5 of the standard. You are turning Kenyans into paupers. Secondary schools to be recategorized. That story on page 4 of the standard. And this was Watson. That is on the wall pages looking at stories beyond the borders. You can follow that and see of South Africa was a worsening. Also keep Kipchoge in team. For Olympics, that story on page 40 of the standard today. Also remember for the young and young at heart, you have Pulse Magazine coming in hardy for you to just give you all the entertainment. And also I'll be remiss if I don't show you also that inside we have fertilizers come, MPs, someone, Linturi. Another story you want to follow on page two of the standard today. Legislators step up efforts to get to the bottom of the fertilizer scandal. Summoning agriculture CS Linturi and his peers, among others, or other state officials to shed light on what they know. That story tucked away on page two of the standard today. This is how it looks. Make sure you grab a copy for yourself. Daily Nation up next. Bizarre spending of taxpayers' cash is what is a splash today. And you can see the flag reading austerity, institutions putting Kenyans' money in fine dining, expensive furniture, and appliances. That is where. The priority is, it seems, even as the doctor's strike continues apace. Curious purchases, 2022, 2023 to 2024, I can just highlight some of what they've put here on the front page of the Daily Nation. 648,000. This is Kirinyaga County we're talking about. Item, Governor's Office Chair. And uh, contractor is Shiloki Enterprise Limited. Right? You can also follow who the contractor is and who is actually behind this particular enterprise. So there's a chair there for 648000 Remember also we had a debate on of the deputy governor's chair of Siaya. That the chair was almost costing or it was costing a million shilling. So there's another one here. There is a 750000 spent on supply of di di digital watch, I should say. And contractor is Amadere Investments, institution is State House. All right, so digital watch also coming in very handy right now. There is 438,220. This is institutions, uh, This the institution is Kefis. Item, two smart TVs, branded visitors book and day planner for managing director's office. Contractor is Dominance Capital Limited and Hardy Supplies. Remember also we had a circular from the head of public service, Felix Koske. 
now saying that all government institutions will not be buying any branded items. And we have also 3 million shillings institution, that is State House, item, heavy duty branded umbrellas. Heavy duty um, branded umbrellas. I've never known if there are any heavy duty uh, branded umbrellas. I'm here to see one and how it looks anyway. And the contractor is Remta Enterprises and Bill Rose Diesel Services Investments. This story can follow it inside the Daily Nation. Interesting. And we have also 4,984,000 million, million, This is Kenya Ports Authority. Item, these are carpet replacements in board chairpersons and managing director's offices. Contractor is Sedalia Investments Limited. All right, we have 522,000. This is the institution. The institution is Omabe County. Hiring Cheska. This is hiring for Cheska for governor's motorcade for one month. And uh, that is Reiti Travel Agency. So Cheska's are being hired to, of course, accompany the governor. Gravy train. That's a prominent question that is being asked here. A state house issued a directive last week barring ministries and agencies from procuring promotional items such as calendars, diaries, and umbrellas. In its latest purge on non-essential spending, a nation investigation can reveal how officials in both the national and county governments are splurging on non-essential items. This story is on page four and five of the Daily Nation today. Right? Let's move on and see what we have as another story there. Truthful man cuts new political image. This is the Deputy President. Frequent meetings with Mount Kenya political leaders and a move to mend faces with the Kenyatta family have raised eyebrows of a Deputy President regarding Kashagwa's political game plan. The DP has recently cut the figure of a changed man from an aggressive, polarizing political figure to embracing a laid back demeanor. With less talking and more action, as close to him, say he has learned from his boss that if you want to be the president, you don't wait to be anointed. You scheme and work towards it. President William Ruto started working on his 2022 presidential bid when he was elected president uh, Uru Kenyatta's deputy. That is in 2013. And you have a story on page 10 of the Daily Nation today. On the sidebar, let's see what we have there. We have... Right, just a moment. We have the crime. This is all about crime. Detectives bust child trafficking syndicate. Police in Eldred have a uh, child trafficking syndicate where employees of private hospitals work with criminals. Also, there's a scorecard. Chaos, it says here, yeah, the state of Sakaja's Nairobi City. Governor Johnson Sakaja road to power on the back of a pledge to transform the most important city in East Africa. But many of Nairobi's residents now think it's all dimples and no plan. You can follow the story on, on the back page of the Daily Nation. It's all dimples and no plans at all, all style and no substance. That is what we have inside the Daily Nation today. Also, you have, you have the Voice magazine coming in handy for you inside the Daily Nation this morning. All right, let's move on and see what the star is holding for us. Report, counties ill-prepared for disaster response. That is what is a splash this morning. Sitting ducks, many underfund, emergency kitty, divert funds, unit vulnerables, or vulnerable in the event of flooding, famines, fires, or disease outbreaks. You have the story on page four and five of a step. And go forth and pursue the mountain. These are the leaders who are, of course, installing Waipa Bos Kalonzo Musioka and blessing him by, is being blessed here by Kikuyu, Council of Elders in Ruaka, Nairobi. And you can follow the story on page four of the start today. It will be gloomy, rain-soaked weekend. This is what METS department is saying. Nearly, nearly all of Kenya will be soaked in heavy rains this weekend. The regional weatherman said the heavy rains will stretch from Turkana to Tanzania border. The Eagle Climate Prediction and Application Center based in Nairobi warned Kenyans the rains could lead to flooding. So be warned, be careful. That story is on page three of the staff.
CareNet consultants join the doctors' nationwide strike. That is also the latest development there. That is on page two. Suspects in 3.9 million shillings is Lee Heist arrested. That story tucked away inside the Star on page 23. We have also the Siasa Pulag magazine in the Star. Will the Tawe movement change Western politics? That is a problem question, battle for Western Kenya politics. And you can see how feisty Natambea has been uh, dressing down with Tangula. That is a story that you want to follow inside the start today. Top officials face arrest over fertilizer, right? We're still dithering with and wondering whether they should be arrested or not. This is what it seems to be highlighted. While heads should draw, investigations are still ongoing. Detectives set to questions of principal secretary and a parastatal chief over distribution of fake farm inputs ahead of planting season up to now. We've been talking a good game about this. No one has been arrested. But let's see, how will it pan out? You can read the story on page four of the People Daily. Brutal's men and women failing Kenyans. This is all the church and uh, the clerics are saying here. Queries raised on why the head of state has been sitting on his arms as cabinet secretaries agonize citizens. And you can see some of their faces splashed here. This is uh, on the spotlight, Susan Nahumicha. We have uh, Davis Chirchir, Kipchumba Murkumen, Kithura Kindiki, Mithika Linturi, Ezekiel Machogu as well. Mangi's job hangs on two billion shillings payment query. That is another story you want to follow inside the People Daily as well. More pain as specialist doctors join raging strike. And why poetry is a powerful medium in changing the world. You can read all about it inside the People Daily today. Let's buckle down to some business. 75 billion shilling stocks stalls M Pesa split from Safaricom is what is headlined in the business daily this morning. Dis discussions ongoing between CBK, Treasury, and Telco. CBK gives no timelines on when decisions will be made. You can follow the story inside the business daily this morning. Also, Kenya set for 131 billion shillings IMF financing and that will be happening in june that story on page 14 of the business daily kenyan fans slow hiring freeze salary increases on economy on economy it says kenya farms have slowed down hiring of workers and frozen pay rises citing reduced demand for goods and services amidst biting cash flow problems in a tough economy also, NCBA revenue from Fuliza and Shwani declined 34%. Just goes to tell you as well just how dire the situation is. KSB to hire 400 in digital client race. That story also tucked away inside the business daily as well. In Tanzania, Bank of Tanzania hikes central bank rate to mop up excess liquidity. The Bank of Tanzania has raised the central bank rate by half a percentage point to 6 percent as it seeks to mop up excess liquidity and control inflation in the economy and ESC gauges operations at shared border post cyber security a top priority as Tanzania eyes digital hub goal all are tucked away in today's publication work on CAG queries Samir tells appointees you can read about it inside the citizen in Uganda now they're mulling over regulating the church government seeks views to regulate the church remember this has been a cutting up issue here in the country and now it's crossed border to Uganda and they're facing also the same worries that we have been facing. Healing utterly sins, it says. Government says the move to generate the national religious and faith organizations policy was triggered by widespread manipulation of congregations by certain leaders within the religious institutions. This is what has prompted this particular development. You can follow the story on page four of the Daily Monitor. Fare thee well, General Kainerugaba, owners Kakwano, and you can see the Chief of Defense Forces, General Mohosi, saluting the casket bearing the remains of Ernest Kakwano at St. John's Church in Tebe yesterday. You can read all about it also inside the Daily Monitor. All Ugandans to undergo blood group tests. This is according to officials there. You can read all about it inside the Daily Monitor. And in Rwanda, former T coffee horticulture workers claim pension rights some people's pension contribution to the social security fund were not paid for over 10 years and the story is tucked away on page three of the new times as well financial institutions take a bigger share of insurance investments and deep fake artificial intelligence content and how to detect it you can get all the wiser there on page five of the new times this morning 
right now I will be showing you what we have on this African, also the editorial cartoon as well, and also other international publications, The Economist, Newsweek, and also the China Daily. But for now, let me just uh, hear from our, our partners who are joining us this morning to take us through some of the conversation, the latest development that we've been having throughout the week uh, regarding the doctor strike, regarding the fertilizer, and also now the spending uh, that we can see the splurge that is coming from the government offices as far as austerity measures is concerned. Are we stanching this flow of corruption? Are we stanching this flow of uh, negligence as far as making sure that we're tightening our belts, even from the government's perspective? I'm joined this morning, as I mentioned earlier, by Dr. Martin Olo, who is an advocate of the High Court. Also, we have Kipruto Rabkirwa, who is a governor's and policy analyst. Dr. Barak Maluka is the strategic communications advisor and also governance and policy analyst professor john akindeki let me just get uh, to hear the voices ali happened ali mm. good to see you, good to see today, you be, today you beat everyone oh, to yeah. the punch I right am, even barack i'm always improving on this is uh, i can see you keeping your new year's resolution absolutely mm -hmm. you know when you are in a country where things are not serious you either decide to be serious or you <laughs> suffer. So I have decided that I will not sit back and cry and mourn and uh, say the things that are not going right. Uh -huh. But I'll be the, making the difference. If it's arriving early, I'll be there. If it's working hard, I'll work hard. If it's looking for money, I'll look for it. Uh -huh. I'll not wait for it. I'll not go and steal it. Uh -huh. And uh, you see, I'm told that uh, it's important that you build that that's yours. You know, my good book tells me that uh, there was a very, uh, a very funny fellow in the Bible, in the book of Judges, called Micah, that he was an honest man, but very foolish. <laughs> <laughs> honest, but very foolish. So I don't want to be that. Mm. Honest, but, honest foolish. but foolish. I want to be honest and wise. Mm -hmm. And that's what is encouraging me this morning, the Bible, even as I wake up to such base and such bad news about people misusing our tax money about fertilizer. We have hit the rock bottom on every indicator or every indices because uh, we want to be better. We want to have a country that is running, a country that is healthy, a country that if you are sick, you can get medical attention. We have doctors on strike. We have clinicians are joining the strike. Nurses are threatening, threatening to join the strike. The public health services are grinding to a halt, but we are going on with business as usual. The president is going on with business as usual. Everybody is going on with business as usual. We have a, farm, a, a, a farming season here. Farmers are being given a fake fertilizer. Yet we want farmers to produce and to be rich, and we also want to tax them. The president is saying nothing. The government is telling us, oh, it is not fake, oh, it is only substandard, oh. I mean, those are not conversations you should be having. We are having people buying watches for three, four hundred thousand. We are having people spending money on, in, 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 I mean, I call them illicit, because why would you need a, a digital watch in the state house? What for? In fact, that's very cheap. Uh, but going, what go, going by what we've had before, yeah, yes. that watches are going even for, for seven ten, million. For, for ten, yeah. Seven, ten seven million. Ten, yeah. yeah. The, the point is that, yes, you can buy it for seven million, but let it be your hard earned money. Not putting your fingers in our taxes okay. and then splashing it around in suits and splashing it around in um, uh, watches and shoes and carrying some of it in cash to fundraising meetings and so on. Basically, when things are so bad, that's when we must be on guard, we must rise, and we must be able to stand up for something. I choose to stand up for something this morning. And by the way, yesterday was my birthday, so I turned an age that is fairly enviable. Uh, very enviable. Mm. So I just want you to know that I'm maturing and as wine, you getting, getting better. You're getting better. Mm. That's why I can keep time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you're realizing that punctuality is the courtesy of the kings, kings. right? And, and, uh, and the gracious politeness of yes. uh, princess. Yes. Uh -huh. so that's what that I'm is what uh, yeah, I'm up. The, the king of France said. All right, let's hear from Kiprutar uh, Abkirwa. Good morning, good to see you. You are the farmer, uh, so at least now the rains are here. Yeah. We, yeah. Are you happy? We thank God for the rains, and we do appreciate that it came on the right, at the right time. Uh, we are worried, just like any other Kenyan, not about the effect of fertilizer alone, but the fact that the communication from the government is a bit at cross purposes. The spokesperson says what we supplied you is soil conditioner. Themselves, there is nothing fake. He says all the fertilizer that we supplied you is genuine. Kenya Bureau of Standards is saying it is not meeting the standards required for the country. Farmers themselves know that they have been sold soil, some of it, uh, some cow, some, uh, not cow dung, some, uh, some material from the pundas and, uh, and mixture with the soil. So my worry is not even uh, all that said and done. My main worry is that uh, the fertilizer that has illegally gotten into the market is about um, 800,000 bags, which when translated is supposed to do production of close to 30% of all the expected yields at the end of the year of maize. And if that is the case, it means we are likely to get depressed harvest and many farmers will go to a loss of close to 40 billion. That is an amount that is really not excusable because the same individuals selling us fake fertilizer are going to import under the guise that uh, the country cannot go without food. It worries me because there is this kind of communication, uh, something, corruption, a deal to the tune of two billion or more, really cannot go unnoticed. We don't need the post audit or post facto audit in future. We would have expected the president to be on top of things and also for heads to roll. And uh, one thing I would want to advise the Minister for Agriculture, it is a very big shame. He should not even have pretended uh, to, to defend the position that is indefensible. If National Cereals and Produce Board can receive fertilizer to the tune of 800,000 bags without notice of the minister, then minister is not what the chair is sitting on at Kilimo House. If all the fake seeds and everything else possibly even herbicides, acaricides, and pesticides are going to be fake in the process because this is actually a systemic thing and the president cannot say all these things are happening uh, under his nose without his knowledge. Mm -hmm. We can say without any fear of contradiction that is part and parcel of this cartel. The cartels that you were saying was chasing from state house must have disappeared into a bratum, but he entered with other uh, number of cartels to do the kind of damage that he's doing. It is not only illegal, but it's also immoral. Mm -hmm. And him being a man of God, the way he professes, it is totally immoral for this to have taken place without serious heads rolling from Kilimo and other places. And some of them have been blaming Estangari in, in Capes. Capes is doing their job. What is happening is that there is a cartel that may be even manufacturing some of the labels uh, under the guise that it, they are coming from Capes. Because National Cereals and Produce Board, the last time I knew, is a government institution. And it cannot be selling, and the managers refuse people to raise complaints that you've already taken the, the fertilizer, so don't come back and ask for anything. So this is something that is worrying me, Dibar. Mm -hmm. It's not about even the damage alone, it is the moral uh, viber that we are destroying in this country. What are our children saying? Mm -hmm. Because you go open the fertilizer, you find half of it is cow dung, and the other half is stones. Indeed. Uh, yeah. So is, us, is uh, the anti-counterfeit uh, agency also, yeah. does this really fall within the remit? Because I've not been hearing even any information from the anti you know, this should have been something that is really should have been multi-agency. This year should have been there. All these agencies should have been there. 
But you see, the issues are raised, like the farmer in Akuru, or the, the, the fellow, the businessman in Akuru, who had uh, fake seed. We want to hear what has happened to him. And in many other cases, and even all these managers in cereals. You remember last year, or is it two years ago, 52 members of the same regime from National Cereals and Produce Board were sacked. But we don't know whether the sacking was done well. Perhaps the same individuals must have gone out and supplied soil from Karyanduzi under the guise that is fertilizer. Mm -hmm. It is worrying, it is worrying, and it's actually a national disaster. We should be ashamed of this kind of action taking place in Kenya. Indeed. Let's hear from uh, Barak Muluka. Good to see you. Welcome back. Uh, I know last weekend also you're burying one of your close friends and also a stalwart in, in matters public publishing in this country. Uh, literati, you know, uh, go, uh, yeah, um, what should I say? Uh, a consummate, uh, also writer as well, Dr. Henry Chakava. He's a doyen, that's the word I was looking. Yes, indeed, uh, two Saturdays ago, we interred the remains of uh, Dr. Chakava. May he repose in peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, talking about which I've seen my brother Martin there is uh, today waxing lyrical mm -hmm. and uh, philosophical and coming of age and uh, congratulations and happy birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy to be here, of course, uh, with uh, my friend uh, Kipruto Kirwa and uh, Professor Kindike. Salute them and the viewers as well. Now, these are issues that are, are being uh, discussed here are grave matters and uh, they need to be contextualized. Contextualized in the sense that uh, we shouldn't look at them almost as if they were isolated happenings. They're things that are systemic and uh, which can be very clearly framed within a certain context. It is a, a context uh, of uh, a regime that uh, unfortunately has become rogue. And those of us who in any way, one way or the other, may have uh, supported those who are in power today when they were on the campaign trail or this country, an apology. An apology in the sense that uh, there are people we may have helped to put in power because we believed in the things that they were saying. And we may have thought the way God believed when he was uh, doing the Garden of Eden that he was doing a good thing only to turn out that uh, he was putting in place beings who are going to have conversations with serpents and do terrible things. So what is the context here? It is a rogue regime and it should be called what it is. Someone talked some years back about a, a bandit economy, but we can talk today about a gangster regime. And when you have a gangster regime, it doesn't matter that people may put on three-piece suits, live in onet and plush environments in suburbia, Nairobi and in other places, or uh, drive uh, in set of uh, the art cars, or put on watches that are worth 10 million shillings. Nobody spends 10 million and shillings on a watch. Nobody. It must be stolen resources. Nobody splurges the kinds of resources that you have seen in the papers today on a seat, on a chair for their office. So we are talking about a, a rogue regime, a kakistocracy, if we should speak like uh, scholars, a kakistocracy, government by the worst elements of society possible. And their focus is not on the welfare of the country or on the welfare of the people, they are on a splurge ego trip mission 
thinking that they are leading the good life, what I have called the ten-star good life. But it is a rat race to nowhere. The clergy are saying here that you are pauperizing the country. What needs to be done is to give context to this whole thing so that we understand why it is that when somebody is selling stones to farmers out there and Donkey West blended with those stones and calling it fertilizers and they are not arrested, I haven't heard of uh, anybody being brought to book. It is because the entire thing is an organic system that is just functioning the way it should be. So that is where we are and we must ask ourselves whether it's going to be possible to get out of that space or not. You see, a gangster is a gangster. Many times when we talk about gangsters, we think about some bandits in, 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 in some uh, forest uh, somewhere in rags, in torn uh, attire, in, in, in rough linen. We don't think about people who look like what Amos Tutola would call complete gentlemen, who are in three-piece suits with extra pieces in their pockets, and uh, who uh, furnish lavish living and lifestyles. But those are bandits, they are gangsters. And so we are talking about a gangster government, a gangster regime, and that's why we are where we are. And we must call it what it is by its name. And as I have said, those of us, in whatever way and to whatever extent that may have contributed to the bringing of this bandit regime into power, or this country, an apology. Mm -hmm. All right, they owe this country an apology. It's a new moniker from the bandit economy to uh, a gangster. Akakistocracy. Akakistocracy, right? Heavy word that uh, you've deciphered for us. But we get to learn uh, as well that how we can best also describe the current uh, regime of a day. Let's hear from Professor Kindiki. Well, thank you, Udibar. And uh, I want to wish my colleague happy birthday and wish you well as you age and uh, that is something. Is M Pesa number is still alive? Uh, <laughs> <I think>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we will hear yeah, something yeah, about it. Yeah, and I want to appreciate Mweshmiwa, Kepruto Arab Kiru and my colleague here, Dr. Meluka. Um, the, 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 the concern here about the Kenyans is about um, the cartels. It's like they are running the show. Invisible, invisible uh, group of people, I will not call them gangs, but I think it's a group of people who are operating mm -hmm. under the scenes, and um, they are under scenes, and they are, they are not seen. And yet, they are seen in other areas. Maybe I don't know what uh, methods can be used. They are seen in the sense that uh, what they do, the outcome, is, is really evident. Uh, for example, with a fake fertilizer. People must have organized themselves somewhere and planned. And then how they go... Um, they go about it until they skip all the, 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 the checks and the balances and measures that are put by the state until it comes to a point where everybody is complaining in their whole country, and particularly the farmers. And you know, the bar, um, our country, um, almost 80%, I don't have the statistics, but majority, quite a number of people in this country, they depend on farming. And uh, only a small number that uh, really a insignificant number that don't rely on farming uh, directly, although they also consume the, the farm products, but they have other sources of income. 
But these people, this is the only source of income they have. They are not on pay slips, they are not on other business. Majority of Kenyans are poor people who are, some of them are peasant farmers. They will not even go for, like the big farmers who have got other businesses elsewhere and they are still farmers and they, they for example, if they are, if you're buying fertilizer, they buy it in bulks and they try to bulk, uh, to, to use it for their farming. Uh, but we are talking of the, the very, very poor people who can't afford even more than two, three, four, five bucks of fertilizer. And this is the only hope they have. And what they get, they're just stones and sand and other kind of, you know, you know, things they call the fertilizer. I think it's something that we have to think about it as a nation. And one thing I'm learning is that um, as I try also to get experience and get, uh, if you look at back in history, Kenyans are very good at reacting on things. We are very reactive than pro proactive. In the sense that um, we don't see things before happening. Until now, farmers are crying, they don't have fertilizer. And I can see many people are encouraging them, you just go for the fertilizer, it's good. But you see now, they, 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 they are trying to weigh the, 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 and, and, and see whether, if you have only money to purchase one bag of, one bag of fertilizer, and, and it's just mixed it's sand and stones. And that's the only money I have in my pocket. Then you tell me, this fertilizer is good. It takes time for one to believe you, because now, really, I don't know. This is the only money I have. Mm -hmm. I go and buy stones and sand. I put it in the soil. Stones from Dubai. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. from wherever they come from. And, and that's it. Uh, and the rains come and pass. And that's the only hope. That's why you find some people, not some, but majority of people are reluctant to buy fertilizer. Reason is, that's the only money I have. I'm not talking of the big farmers. And the, those are not very many. They have the money. If they can have the fertilizer, they can buy it in you know, nab big numbers. And if they, 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 they don't harvest a lot, they don't mind, they have other sources of income. But we are talking of these people. The only income they have is that one bag of fertilizer. And if they use that money, they will not have this money. Yeah. That's it. So what we are saying is that I think we are, we, we are, we are so much reactive on the issue. And I, 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 I think the minister, uh, the cabinet secretary should uh, also be telling us actually the, the steps is taking rather than just defending. You know, defending the position is one thing and also telling people the steps you are taking is another. So it should even telling us the steps is taking to help the farmers come out of this quagmire because I, I just call it a quagmire because really they have no way out and this is the only hope they have. The rains are there. We are waiting for, you know, we are waiting, they, are, they are waiting to plant and then they see what they are going to have. And we are not giving any solution at all. Indeed. They are only com complaining and complaining. Right. Yeah. So, so, if, so you this look, yeah, if you look at the dailies as well, uh, Professor, and uh, also Dr. Martin Nolo, we, we, we always told, okay, uh, top officials first arrest of fertilizer, detectives will be working on it, uh, still the edible oils. This was a same story that the president said, well, now we're ordering the EACC uh, to actually start investigating, the, the, the DCA to start investigating. Up to now, we've not gotten any information. How many months are we talking about since now, the edible oil scandals? Right before even, I think this was last year. Yeah. Until now, nothing has really happened. We've not had, ESCC came up with their reports, right? And of course, we saw uh, them flagging uh, most of the government uh, offices as key perpetrators of, and conveyors of, of corruption in this country. But how then do we trust that detectives are gonna work on this and it's not going to go silent? Kemsa is here. We were told hells will roll. Uh, that money, of course, will be uh, gotten back. Nothing has happened as far as Kemsa is concerned. We continue a pace as if nothing, mm. nothing can mm. actually touch this untouchable uh, that we have perpetrating this evil. So if we are told that investigation now has begun, how sure are we that we'll have uh, a satisfactory closure from that investigation? But on top of that, I want us just to tease out some of his expenses and then you tell me, because I find it a bit ridiculous. <laughs> when we talk about um, a heavy duty branded umbrella, I've never seen that sort of, maybe, okay, I'm not maybe exposed like that, 
but you can tell me how does it really work? What is a heavy duty umbrella? For three million? Yes. Did you hear of Casogenic wheelbarrows? Yeah, I remember Casinogenic. Uh, yeah, yes, the 100,000 Casinogenic uh, wheelbarrow uh, that was, uh, what was the, the stainless steel? Yeah, that's yes. The, that's the same narrative. It's the same narrative. Yeah, because this it's, is, it's ordinary umbrella, ordinary wheelbarrow, but baptized because of its cost. So or really, really, when you have the drops of rain, actually they just roll over. It, it can't even, or maybe <laughs> it's got a heater. So it, it just disappears, it, it evaporates. It, it, it's it's uh, nothing but uh, a scheme to defraud. I mean, basically what we are doing yeah, I'm just trying to, to bring the, just the, the joke that is so sick yeah. when we're talking about this. When, when you talk about now the seat itself for half a million, yeah. I wish you could be sitting on these seats. And yeah, maybe it could be massaging you and uh, you're feeling warm uh, and maybe it's got some Headsets, you can listen to music as well. It's a comfort seat, right? It's very therapeutic, right? You no, can meditate. No, buy it the, for yourself. This your is house. what I'm saying, yeah. For, buy for, it for yourself. That's what I'm saying. Not on our money. Why do you want to be? A country. Yeah. A country that claims to be broke. Wait, doctors. A, a country seen. that cannot get funds to pay doctors. The health sector is collapsing, the food sector is collapsing. The transport sector is collapsed. The housing sector is in disaster. The things which you'd call the five pillars of the Kenya Kwanzaa government are in the sick bay. The government, the chief of staff and head of public service is telling public servants, ministries and parastatals that they will not buy t-shirts. It's not the buying of the t-shirt that is the problem. The problem is the amount of money that's going to that t-shirt. And this place has become kingdom spendthrift, basically to satisfy individuals' uh, egos. And as I s said earlier on, it is systemic. And so the right people are in, in the right place everywhere. If you look for those who should be investigating, they are the right people. They belong to that system. If you look to, for those who should be prosecuting, they are in the right place. If you look for those who should be auditing uh, these things, apart from the, the few individuals who are bringing out these things, and they're going to take the beating. They're going to be asked, why are you sending this information out there? It's how a kakistocracy works, a patrimonial, neo-patrimonial system works, that the power that be exploits public resources to buy loyalty from individuals who then help to plunder the economy, to splurge resources on things of this kind. In the self-same papers that we are reading today, you are seeing them telling us that uh, IMF is going to uh, send to Kenya, I don't know how many uh, hundreds of billions. So we are in a, 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 a circuitous catch-22. You know, you know the brother was saying earlier about um, the man called Michael. You know, this man stole his mother's money. And when the mother cast the money, the mother, the man returned the money and then both he and the mother smelted the, you know, the, 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 the what is the, the, coins. the coins and made an idol. And then he got a Levite, a priest, to come and be his priest. The point I'm making is that we are looking at very classical examples of Kenya Kwanzaa today that will bring you a Benihin and tell us how the country is healing and continue on idolatry, the worship of money and the worship of uh, evil and still want to convince us that we are living in good Christian times. You earlier on said that, uh, you know, wh why are we seeing all this? In and what we want to, to confess is that we know that this government did not campaign on the basis of 
zero tolerance for corruption. But we also know that when the top or the head of government itself does not condemn but condones corruption, then the entire system will always collapse. Because if I know that Mwishimo Akirwa here is stealing, and I know he's stealing in billions, I will have no problem stealing, but stealing in millions. Because then the many of, those of us that steal in millions will eventually steal more than the billions that he is stealing or as equal. So if we have a country where anything is going, uh, the issue around our uh, budget, it's ballooning, that we are not seeing any cutbacks on the budget, but rather we are seeing increase. We were told we would live within our means, but we are seeing a continuous borrowing. In, anybody who wants to live within their means does not continue to borrow. Stops borrowing, works with whatever they have, and tells their family that we are going to survive on Managu and Ugali, and it has to be either brown or white, whatever the case, whatever is affordable. But we are in a five-star kind of a hotel where we are lang you know, where others are lavishing and languishing, but we are enjoying as if that's the nature of what we are looking for. So we must tell ourselves that it cannot be this way. We are not going to pro prosper in this manner. I hear every day we are told that we want to change this country, that we want to be like, that we are playing in the same league like Morocco and whatnot. I mean, we are making a joke of ourselves. If we really want to play in the league of middle, middle, mid, mid level nations, let us be serious about corruption. Let us be serious about development. Let us be serious about services and, prof and offer people what is going to make the difference. Indeed. Right, it's ticking up to 7 o'clock right now. Just uh, three minutes shy to 7 o'clock. Time for us to take a short break. When we circle back, we shall be looking intensely in these matters as well and also putting tails on the ping pong and the aggie baggy that is actually happening right now between UDA and ODM regarding some of uh, the chairs of the boards of the Parastatums, that is Kenya Power, Joey Modibo, and also the chair of Kenya Revenue Authority, Anthony Moura, who have been appointed as UDA officials to, of course, be overseeing uh, the running of the party's elections. And this has raised questions with ODM regarding the appointment as well. But they say there is no violation of any law as it stands. This is a reaction from uh, UDA. And uh, there's no rhyme or reason on why they should not go full steam ahead and, of course, function in this particular seat as well. We take a short break. When we circle back, we also question ourselves who's trying to go for the life of Omitata, where we had a, his uh, house was raided as well. So we want to see what really happened. Was it just uh, another case of, uh, you know, robbers who were trying to access his house or there is an ulterior motive behind this particular incident as well. We take a short break. You're watching Wongozi here on Morning Prime, where we keep the moist.